So let's bring in co-host of Five right here on Fox News, Juan Williams, and former senior Trump administration advisor, Christian Witten. Great to have both of you gentlemen with us tonight. Nice to be with you, Shannon. All right, Kristen, I'll start with you. There are Democrats who say this president is pushing us closer to a war in the Middle East, to a conflict, potentially a military conflict with Iran. Uh, they say he's to blame for the tensions. What do you say? Well, no, the Iranians are to blame for the tensions. They're the ones who are causing this, and they're the ones who it looks like may be attacking oil uh, transports in international waters. You know, um, Iran has been on the march recently. We haven't gotten a lot of support from our European allies, but we have unified support from our allies across the Middle East. Uh, what we have is now an appropriate show of force to remind Iran of the consequences if it wants to start a war in the region. And I think the president has been proceeding very prudently in this matter. One, what do you think? Because a lot of folks think that maybe they are provoking to try to get an overreaction from the U.S. Uh, to draw us into something that Secretary Pompeo, the president, keeps saying is not what we ultimately want to happen. Well, I think they are, first and foremost, uh, still aggravated over the fact that we pulled out of the Iran nuclear deal. And then you have the fact that our allies, our European allies, as Chris was just saying, did not back us. They went and tried to have a separate deal with Iran. And now you have the kind of steps that we've taken with regard to Israel. And, of course, uh, Benjamin Netanyahu, the prime minister there, has said that he sees Iran as a continuing threat and wants to up the ante. So from our side of the fence, I think Iran could see us as being very aggressive. I would also just quickly throw in here that we have been similarly aggressive in terms of trying to disrupt the previous principles of relationship with North Korea. And, of course, the recent actions there by Kim Jong-un developing a short-range nuclear missile uh, does not strike me as positive for us, and it certainly might not strike the Iranians as positive, given that we pulled out of their deal. Yeah, and there are um, a lot of intertwined conversations with that. We're going to talk about that with the vice president coming up a little bit later on in the show. In the meantime, I want to read this from Politico under the headline, Trump's China grudge match may be spinning out of control. Trump loves a booming stock market, which he tracks obsessively. At the same time, he loves his power to unilaterally impose tariffs and sees winning tough concessions from China as key to his 2020 re-election bid. Um, Christian, a lot of folks telling him not to back down, and that includes folks on both sides of the aisle. It's Kristen reported that includes the Senate's top Democrat. Yeah, this is a big change. It's a, bipart it's a change, a departure, I should say, from administrations of both parties, the Obama administration and the Bush administration, in which I served. Really, administrations going back at least until 1980 have really appeased China, have hoped that economic liberty, which is sort of phony in the first place, would lead to political liberty. Well, quite the opposite has happened. They're robbing us blind, stealing intellectual property, uh, waging economic warfare, flooding America with deadly fentanyl, and the list goes on. And what It's sort of like when President Roosevelt went to Congress after Pearl Harbor. He didn't say, let's declare war on Japan. He said, I want you to recognize that a state of war exists with Japan. In this case, China has been at war with us economically for decades. And finally, President Trump and Democrats in Congress are waking up to that fact. Yeah, and there are a lot of questions for folks out there who say, has the president, is this an impulsive decision that's continuing to ratchet up the tariffs as they say they're going to do the same? Juan, Steve Bo uh, Bannon, obviously a former White House strategist, helped out with the Trump campaign, says this is not just about trade. It's far deeper than that. It's about a fundamental restructuring of the economy. He says Trump's thought this through and markets will eventually respond more positively. So it's not uh, a knee-jerk reaction, it sounds like, by the president. I hope that's true, but the appearance at the moment is that the president really thought that the Chinese economy is in the midst of transition. It's not going well over there in terms of their stock market and their well-being. And he thought he had leverage and he could force a deal now. Uh, basically, uh, he disrupted the principle set. If you wanted to go back, Chris was talking about Bush, uh, but you can go even farther back to, because the Chinese have been cheating forever and ever, it seems to me. But you go back to the last two administrations. What they tried to do was to get China to engage in a more limited way. President Trump comes in and he says, the whole thing is open. And let's just talk about all that's going on here with regard to trade. I think that if he has thought this through, as he said he has done, that's where he comes up short. Because now you can see the Chinese are responding in an aggressive manner that looks like it's going to draw this out. The stock market's not responding well. And American consumers, when they realize that these tariffs really amount to taxes on all that we buy, especially going into the Christmas season, 
there's going to be a huge political cost. Well, he feels confident. We'll see if the long game or the short game, how it plays out. Juan, great to see you in person. Nice to be with you. Christian, Shane. great to have you with us too. Thank you both.